Hi there. I just came off of an interview with a German podcaster and, uh, and I wanted to share with you that one of the questions she asked me is how to tell the difference between your intuition and your mind. So basically, you know, if you're, when, when you feel something is your intuition, like how do you know it's your intuition or is it your mind or is it wishful thinking? Like how can you separate it? Now that's a question that comes up for me quite a lot. So I thought I would just do this quick little live video to speak about that difference and how to tell the difference. So first of all, um, if, if the thoughts that are coming to you feel fearful, then they are not your intuition. Um, your intuition never gives you fear-based thoughts. Your intuition takes you out of fear. The second thing I want you to know is that if the, the whatever it is, the thought or the download or whatever it is, if it feels good, if it feels uplifting, listen to it. Don't worry about whether it's wishful thinking or whether it's, it's your thoughts or, or whatever. If it feels good, you know, like sometimes people say, oh, but that might be my imagination. So here's the thing. Your higher self or your guides or the other side, they use your imagination to communicate with you. Um, please watch my previous video that I did last week called um, Signs or Communicating with the Other Side. I don't remember exactly what I called it, but it was about, about messages or communicating with the other side. So anyway, um, our higher self, uses things like our imagination and our thoughts to drop things into our mind. So if it feels good, don't worry about where it came from or is it your mind. Follow it. Take it to heart. Because when you actually follow the thoughts uh, and the downloads and the intuitive hits or whatever it is that actually feel positive and feel good, you can't go wrong in your life. It's when you follow all the fear-based stuff that you actually get led awry and, and your life kind of goes a bit weird and off the rails. Um, so that's the biggest message. Also, very often what happens is you might get an intuitive thought that says, oh, this is what you need to do. Oh, this would be good for you. This is your purpose. This is your passion. And you get all these amazing thoughts and you feel inspired. You feel really good. And then you get these other thoughts that say that, oh, um, you're... Who do you think you are for doing this? And that's so dumb and you know, you're not gonna survive doing this. Now those, the second batch of thoughts, that's your mind. That's your conditioned mind trying to talk you out of it. The first batch of thoughts that made you feel uplifted, that was your intuition. So my point here is that your intuition will always, always, always try to uplift you. It's just what it does. It will uplift you, it will guide you out of trouble. And the question that people say is that, what if you're in danger? Doesn't your intuition then put you in fear by telling you you're in danger? Doesn't it need to warn you of danger? Here's how your intuition does it though. It doesn't go, oh my God, you're in danger, you're gonna die. No, because that would put you in fear. No, your intuition actually gives you guidance of how to get out of that danger. And there's two things I want to say here. One is it will give you in bite-sized pieces what you need to know to get you out of danger. And number two is it does not put you in danger or put you in fear. Because when you are in fear, when you are in the energy of fear, your energy gets denser and you are in fact um, less intuitive when you are in fear. So this second piece is super important for you to know because if you are always living in fear, your intuition has a harder time getting through to you. This is why I tell people, stop being addicted to the news that puts you in this panic place of breaking news all day, every day where you are living in the physical, in fight or flight, in survival all day, every day, highly focused on your physical. When you are living like that, you start to lose touch of your intuition. 
because your intuition operates on a different energetic level and it cannot get through to you when you are down in survival mode. You have to meet it halfway. And I'll tell you in a minute how to do that, but you have to kind of meet it halfway so that your intuition can come through. So how do you meet it halfway? You meet it halfway, first of all, by eliminating all these fear-based messages from your life every day. Don't glue yourself to the news. Do things that uplift you. Go out in nature. For me, seeing the sun, seeing the ocean, being out in the open makes me feel very uplifted and being in nature. Be with people with community who are like-minded. That's the other thing that's so important is talk to people about intuition and stuff like that. People who think like you. Don't talk to people about this stuff who you know are debunkers and naysayers. Don't try to convince them of this. I gave up doing that many years ago because I realized it was very depleting and very tiring. If someone doesn't believe in it, if someone thinks it's woo-woo or hocus-pocus or uh, whatever else they want to call it, um, it takes a lot of energy to try and convince them. And it's not on you to try and convince anyone. I, many years ago, when this, when I had the NDE happen to me, I went online and I found a community of people who thought, who had NDEs, and I shared with them and they shared with me, and it helped me, it helped me through those years, because the community, the physical community I was in, were not like that at all. They were very, very much entrenched in physical and medical and pharmaceutical and all these kinds of things. Whereas me going through what I went through, I realized that uh, my consciousness, my spirit, my soul was really the biggest determining factor of my health and well-being. And so it gave me a completely different view of life. And even though one of the doctors that helped me through this, he knew what happened to me was real. He completely believed me. He wanted me to share my story with the medical community. And so I did. And so he would have me speak at medical conferences. But the thing is, here's one of the things that I noticed. I had a community online that I was sharing with who all had NDEs. And we were talking about amazing stuff, about intuition, about seeing the other side, about about expansion, about consciousness. We were talking about all this stuff that was so uplifting for me. And then I would go to these conferences with the medical doctors, and even though the doctor that would invite me meant really well because he wanted my story shared with other medical people, and I completely endorsed that and thought it was amazing, I found it very draining and depleting speaking to the medical community um, and, and, and the material science community because their questions were very almost almost felt like they were trying to take away my gift from me because they needed to be convinced and I had to work really hard at showing them proof and and going over things saying things over and over in a way that was palatable for medical people and I realized, and even though they were affected at some level, it changed them at some level, I know I did some good there, but for me, it was so uplifting to talk to like-minded people. Our conversations would, would soar because we weren't still stuck down at the level where I was still trying to say, yes, this happened, and here's the medical record to show this, and you know, we weren't still stuck at the physical level. So this is why what I implore you to do, the most important thing, is to find a community of people who think like you. Because if you are stuck with just watching what's on mainstream media and what's going on in, in the world and what's going on in the medical world and the government and other people here in the physical who are entrenched in the physical, if you are an empath, if you are sensitive, if you are someone who's intuitive, it can feel very depleting. Your intuition, your higher self doesn't want that for you. And what then happens is when you are depleted and when you become entrenched in that world just because you want to fit in or because they make you feel the other world is woo-woo, 
what happens is slowly you lose your intuition because your intuition can't communicate with you when your energy is so dense and so far away. You're supposed to meet it halfway, remember? So you need to do this for yourself, believe in your intuition. If you have to start by watching shows on TV where they talk about things like being a multi-sensory being, watch shows, there's, there's quite a few on, let's say Gaia TV or on Netflix. I know there's quite a few shows like that. Start watching shows like that. Start talking to people, like-minded people. In fact, this is one of the reasons why I created my online sanctuary, because what saved my life during those years after my near-death experience, those were the hardest years with which, in which um, to integrate that experience here in this physical world. If I didn't have my little online community, um, I don't know what I would have done. And from there, I was able to continue to, to um, hold on, not only hold on, but to, uh, to actually soar in my belief in what happened, in my knowing of what happened. I was man able to soar in that to the point where Wayne Dyer discovered my story. I was able to create the reality that I wanted in the world from the inside out. If I did not hold on to what happened to me on the other side, if I gave it up and bought into everything that I was being told in the physical world, I would not be here today doing what I do, living the life I live, having Wayne Dyer discovered my story and having written books and all. All of this happened because I knew that we create our reality from the inside out. All of this happened because I listened to my intuition. I cannot, I cannot stress it strongly enough. Please, please don't give in to the messages of this physical world that are fear-based. Please keep tuning into your intuition. Your intuition will f help you find ways to navigate out, uh, out of fear. Um, I'm not saying fear doesn't exist. What I am saying is that living in fear 24 seven and operating from survival and fight or flight is not healthy and makes you lose touch with your intuition. When you face fear, intuition is what helps you out. So how do you get out of that fear and tap into your intuition? You do that first by relaxing, by breathing, and by doing whatever it takes to relax yourself. Start by turning off the TV, turn off the news. Start by finding a community of like-minded people. Start by distancing yourself from people who constantly bombard you with fear-based messages. When I was going through my illness, I was being bombarded by fear-based messages about my illness. Now, if you are going through a physical illness, your intuition will help you guide your way out of that illness. Your intuition will not say to you, oh my God, this is a deathly disease, you're gonna die. No, it's not gonna say that. Your intuition will guide you to peace and comfort and will guide you on the steps, step by step, what you need to do. I use my intuition whenever I face minor illnesses now for the last, whatever, 10, 15 years when I've had to deal with infections or other things. I use my intuition and say, okay, body, what do you want? Tune in, check out all my other YouTube videos where I speak deeper about how to connect with your intuition. Check out my online sanctuary where, because my online community is what helped me through, I've created an online community to do the same, where we can take the conversations deeper and further and where we can create a cocoon away from the fear-based messages because the idea is to feel that your intuition is normal, so normal that you, that you can have conversations with people for whom their intuition is normal. People with whom you can talk about being a multi-sensory being, living in a multi-dimensional universe where consciousness is actually what determines the quality of your life, not meds and drugs and stuff like that. It's a whole different way of viewing the world. That is what has helped me to thrive. That's what I want to share with you. And that's what I want for all of you. So 
My sanctuary is at um, anitamorjanisanctuary.com, but even if you can't join the sanctuary, that's fine. Please continue to just watch my other YouTube videos. If you liked this one, um, please click like on it. Please follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, whatever. I'll keep popping up. I'll keep sharing stuff with you. Um, Abby, do you have anything to add? Questions, anything? Yeah, um, so talking about intuition, knowing between that, like when it's actually coming, being channeled down from source or whatever, do you like personally feel different when it's coming from intuition? Are you like, there were people saying like, oh, I get tingles if I, yes. like, do you, you feel it specifically? You feel it. You feel uplifted. You feel uh, like, wow, like it, it, you get tingles, you get goosebumps, you get all of these good things. So now I want you to know when you feel restricted, when you feel fear and your heart is beating fast and you're feeling fear, uh, what I mean is by heart beating fast is like, like when you're feeling fear, you're feeling constricted, you're feeling you need to go in survival. That's not intuition. That is your mind buying into some fear-based thought. It's a conditioned reaction to survival and fear. But when you feel, whoa, like, oh my God, when you feel that's an aha moment, when you're listening to someone speak and you get an aha moment, that's your intuition saying that, that's what I've been trying to tell you. Even though someone else is speaking it, your intuition will tell you that, that statement right there, that's it. So it's getting aha moments, it's tingles, it's goosebumps, it's feeling uplifted, it's feeling like, wow, I see a way out of this predicament. All of those feelings, that, those are intuition. And for me, sometimes um, if I'm entrenched in fear or something, Going out in nature helps, listening to music helps, things like that help to lift me out of it. Other moments that help um, with our intuition, our intuition tries to catch us sometimes first thing in the morning before we've started our day because when you start your day, you start going into all your fear-based thoughts. Um, so our intuition tries to catch us <clears throat> in that early morning while we're between the sleep-wake state or late at night. Our intuition also tries to catch us in our dreams. So your other side or your loved ones or your guides, they try to speak to you through your dreams. And they, they try to speak to you when you're relaxed, when you're meditating, when you're relaxed, when you're walking, when your mind wanders, when you're washing dishes, when you're in the shower, when you're doing mindless things. So the more of those things you do, the better for your intuition, for your higher self. Um, and particularly if you are a highly sensitive person and you are an empath, this is really important for you. It's really important for you because the more you suppress your intuition, the more you are suppressing who you really are. Why are you, you know, like uh, as a, um, a highly sensitive person or an empath for you, your, your sixth sense or your intuition is very strong and it's very loud for you. It's as loud as your sense of sight or, or hearing or, or smell or touch or taste. That's why you're called highly sensitive. That's why you're called an empath because your, your non five senses, your other senses are very loud for you. So if you keep suppressing that, you're suppressing a very big part of who you are. So this is a shout out to empaths, highly sensitive people. And also I encourage highly sensitive people and empaths to please embrace all of who you are. The world needs you. The world needs more of you. It really does. Um, so many of us are feeling kind of done with uh, the really high focus on, on survival and fight or flight and fear and running on fear and a whole world being operated on fear. I think it's time for highly sensitive people to come up and the empaths to come up, embrace your sensitivity, embrace your intuition, follow your intuition, create a whole different life, and let's see a whole different world and a whole different reality. So, um, uh, and one of the things I just wanna mention is, because I followed my intuition all these years, um, I have managed to create a life that's very different from what is being dictated in the mainstream world. And I just want you to know that if we want to help people, the only way we can do it is from seeing the world differently. You cannot 
change the world or save the world from being part of the problem. You need, we need to be part of the solution. So thank you for tuning in. Any more? Oh, I can, I'll ask you questions forever. If you want to keep talking, we can, <laughs> we can keep asking questions. Do you want to keep going? Let's go one more. Okay. Um, so what you're saying here is like all of the, like even when you're thinking good thoughts, that's also your intuition coming in. So when you're saying I followed my intuition and that's how I am living my dream life, would you almost say that like fantasy is source presenting you with the opportunities and like that could be a form of yes. intuition itself? And yeah, fant there's, there's nothing wrong with actually using your imagination and even thinking really um, things that stimulate you in a positive way because when you are in that state, so whether that picture you have is true or not, when you are in that heightened state, that is when intuition can actually come into you. So for example, if I, all I had to do was to really just make sure that I, um, basically what I learned was to love myself like my life depends on it, which is something I never knew before. And so I was always living to try and please other people. I was always living for other people before the NDE. And so I was in a very low energy state all the time. I never took care of myself. I put myself last. I never took care of my own problems. I never uplifted myself. I never believed that I was worthy or deserving or could do anything or could have anything. And it was always, so I was always in service to other people. And maybe I was in service to other people to escape my own life. I wasn't facing that um, I needed to take care of myself. And so even when I was sick, I didn't want other people to help me or take care of me. I always felt, oh gosh, I don't want to burden them because then I'll owe them something. But in actuality, when people do something for you, um, they're not asking for you to do something in return. If they are, then it's not a gift. It's, it's an exchange. It's something completely different. So, so anyway, um, so the person I was was very different. My energy was super low. And when your energy is at that level, even your intuition can't penetrate. And even when you get intuitive hits, your mind then says, oh, that was your imagination. And then you end up listening to your mind. So my point is, we need to actually listen to the better feeling thought. Because when we listen to the one that makes us feel better, it raises our energy and we become more um, we become more open to intuitive hits. Now, if, if I said that, oh, my intuition, it took me here because of my imagination, that's not exactly true because even in my wildest imagination, I would not have been able to imagine what my life was going to be like. Because from where I was um, to what I end up, have ended up doing now, I would not even have known, like there's no way that my imagination could have created that, oh, Wayne Dyer's going to discover my story, and then he's going to ask me to write a book, and then I'm going to have another book, and another book, and then I'm going to be on, on Dr. Oz, and on uh, the news, and this and that. Even my wildest imagination could not have, um, have dreamed that, but what my intuition did, or what my imagination did, was I kept having the feeling that this is going to be good. This is going to be good. This is going to be good. Life is going to be good. Life is going to take care of me. And so in little ways, in little, little ways, I was following my intuition in just little ways, like do this next, do this next. Tiny baby steps, baby steps like, oh, you need to, um, you need to put your story out on the internet. Oh, you need to listen to this um, email. Oh, you need to do that. Like little, little baby steps. Okay, let me do that. That makes me feel good. And it led me to something that I couldn't have imagined it. So, but use your imagination to uplift you. When you're uplifted, your intuition communicates with you much easier. Before I forget though, I want to give a shout out to Robin Mariani because uh, I know it's, uh, I've gone on a tangent, but I tend to forget when I'm on this subject. 
But uh, thank you, Robin Mariani. She sent us a wonderful tripod, which we are using right now. Thank you. Um, I know that when Abby was holding <laughs> the phone, <laughs> it sometimes shook a little bit. So um, we, yeah, we kind of, we, we have tripods, but this one's a great one. So thank you, Robin. Um, I know there was something else I wanted to say in relation to that to do with uh, but maybe well, celebrating empaths who are following their intuitions with what's empath impact and yeah so um so if you are fulfilling your intuition i'd love to hear from you please post something tag anita morjani empath impact because we really want to share this message that um, we really really need to stop spreading the fear the more that we spread fear the more that we are actually um, lowering our mutual energies and, and kind of cutting ourselves off from getting, receiving the intuition. So that's what I want you to know. So if you are somebody who's out there doing something, helping to spread the love, helping to let you know that actually if you follow your intuition, you're going to be okay. You're going to be okay. The universe has your back. Your uh, higher self has your back. And uh, if you're out there spreading the message that you can tune into your intuition, let me know. Tag me and tag and, and hashtag empath impact. I'd love to hear from you and we'll do what we can to share your post as well. So thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, and I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye.